good to see everybody this morning. Tell you what, you have some talented children. Really enjoyed the uh, this music, singing. Um, boy, I hope my Bible stays together here. I don't know if you have a Bible like mine, but it kind of has a mind of its own. We have to rethink this. Um, my name is Bill Carrier. It's very good to be with you. I'm very privileged uh, to be asked by your pastor to uh, fill in for him. I don't take that lightly at all. Um, like you said, I do work for Coca-Cola. I fix things. That's uh, what I do. I'm a fixer. But uh, I'm, I'm just glad that, you know, just thinking about Jesus Christ, the name above all names, the only name by which we must be saved. Uh, what a name to be proclaimed. Amen? Turn your Bibles to the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20. Now, I just delighted a bunch of you saying, oh, good, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I mentioned the verse, but we're going to talk about a little bit of it, and really I'm not going to talk much more about but just a little bit of it, which is kind of disappointing. But hopefully it'll be... My, my prayer today is that you be set free. How many of you like freedom? Amen? I mean, we... Did anybody have to pass through a checkpoint to uh, get here this morning? Uh, explain to a government official uh, why you had to be here? No, not yet. But, uh, but right now, we have freedom. The one thing that I fear that we don't have in the body of Christ a lot is freedom. And today, I want you to be free. But not the type of freedom that some pe people take to abuse but the freedom that really matters. I want to talk about the one phrase, Christ lives in me. Verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. And that, that's a, I have been crucified and I still am crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by, the, by faith in the, in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I am more aware of my deficiency uh, now more than ever, Lord, to communicate your word. Lord, it's not by our might. It's not by our intellect. It's not by any kind of finesse that we can do that communicates, but Lord, by your Spirit. Today, Lord, more than anything, we need you to speak. Lord, help me, Lord, to, to be focused on what you would have to be said today. Because, Lord, what you say is really what matters. What I say it doesn't matter. Be with us now as we Listen intently to your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now this verse, I am crucified with Christ. That's a perfect tense verb. It means that it's happened, it's still happening, and it's true. Now, crucifixion is, we talk about it, we think about it, but we really, we can't put ourselves on the cross ourselves. Uh, we put Jesus there all the time. But ourselves, you are crucified. You are identified with him to the point to where when Jesus died, you died. See, Christ lives in me. That's an incarnational idea. Number one, that's a carnational idea. In other words, it, it has to become in a body. You realize that God didn't, was just not happy to send the word in the Old Testament. He wasn't just happy to send you know, a, a message, but he wanted to send it in a person. He wanted to send it in a body. So he sent his son to explain him. We talked about that this morning in Sunday school, that it, it, God sent his son to explain who he was. And so we have been identified with Christ, and guess what? Now we become that explanation. We become the thing that explains who God is. It's cru crucifixional. He died as me, for me, but he died as me, 
He was buried for me, but as me. He was risen as me, and he ascended as me. So when, when he died, you died. When he was buried, you were buried. When he rose, you rose. When he ascended, you ascended. That, that, that's just our identification. You're so tied into him. It's also a devotional idea. Jesus loved and he loves me. Do you realize that today, that God loves you in your best time, in your worst time? He loves you. When people are at their worst, where don't they want to go? Church. Why is that? You better ask that question. Why is that? They feel like God's mad at them. Well, you know, you can't change your, his opinion about you if you tried. He loves you, forever will love you. If you reject him and die and go to hell, he'll love you forever. It's also substitutional. He gave himself for me. As if I was the only one that ever lived. He died for me. But he also died for you. So you have the idea of Christ lives in me. So now you've got Christ, a proper name. You've got a verb, lives. You've got a preposition, in, and a personal pronoun, me. So what you have is Jesus Christ, the person of all majesty. You have me, the person of all misery. So you better be careful what you put in between those two words. Amen? Christ lives in me. Now, how do you put that in your head? Well, we're going to try. What I have here is a gospel or the Baptist hymnal. It's got even got your name on it. All of that Baptist church. I have in my pocket a glove. It's actually an old work glove. It's got holes in it. It's dirty. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this idea of Jesus living in me. We're going to give this glove an assignment. We want this glove to pick up this book. Now, at this point right now, i got to set some ground rules. Don't talk unless I say you can. All right, now everybody wants to talk. Right? Because I said you can't. But I don't want you to talk. I'm going to let you talk later. But right now, I don't want you to talk. We want this glove to pick up this book. Now, I think we all know what needs to happen. But we're going to play around with this idea for a little while, okay? So, how can I get this glove to pick up this book? Well... I could tell it to pick up the book. So let's try that. Now you all think I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. I got some room for rent unfurnished upstairs. Okay, so now, glove, pick up the book. <laughs> it just sits there. Why is it sitting there? Did I not tell it to pick up the book? You cannot live the Christ-like life by being told to live the life of Christ. No more than the Pharisees could. Coming to church is not going to do it. Being good people is not going to do it. You know what the definition of a Pharisee is? You ready? A Pharisee is someone with a Bible desperately studying it, trying to understand it. That's a Pharisee. That's exactly what they did. They scoured the scriptures. They scoured and studied and they looked and they looked and they were, they were serious. More serious than me or you ever be about it. And they killed the Son of God. So you cannot be told to live the Christ-like life. No more than that glove can pick up that book. 
So let's try something else, shall we? I could explain it. Maybe it didn't understand. All right? So glove? <laughs> Does it look as stupid to you as it feels to me? Okay, glove. What you have to do is you have to turn yourself over. You have to kind of fold these fingers over. Take these, this fourth, first finger and your thumb, push it together, put your hand, well, first, sorry, put it underneath the book, push your hand, fingers together, and then you'll be able to pick up the book. Now that you understand, I've fully explained it, pick up the book. It just sits there. You can no, long, no more live the Christian life, the Christ-like life, by having it explained to you any more than that glove can pick up that book by having it explained to him or it. I gave it a, gave it a, gave it a gender, didn't I? See, we think the more we understand, the more we read, the more, we, the more knowledge you have, the more you understand how to live this life. Well, good luck with that because it's not going to happen. Like I said, the Pharisees understood that more than you'll ever know. And you see, why are we even talking about this? See, we've made a lot of New Year's resolutions. People say, oh, you know what? I'm going to do better this year. This year I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my devotions. I'm going to read through the Bible. They go, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers. <laughs> right? You get to Leviticus, you jump it. I'm going to do better. I'm going to try harder. I'm going to do, I'm going to do better. And I'm just going to, I'm going to go to church more. I'm going to read my Bible more. I'm going to study more and all this. And you know what happens about February? If I just know more, no. I know what it is. That glove didn't hear me. That's the problem. Now, if anybody's sleeping at this point, nudge them real quick, okay? We don't want them to become the spectacle, okay? Hey, glove! Pick up the book! <laughs> it just sits there. When you, when a pastor or a preacher comes yelling at you, now I'll yell and I'll get, I'll get loud. But he's speaking to the shuke in you, the flesh. That's what that speaks to. See, there's some people, they want that preacher that comes at them hard. Give me that hard, uh huh, preaching. Right? And all that does is speak to your flesh. It speaks to right here, into the person, your shuke. See, this is not a... But this is not just an inspiration. See, we get this idea that Jesus was on the Sermon of the Mount, and he was stomping up and down on that, on that hillside and going, come on, everybody, just get excited about it. Well, you better read the Scriptures again. It says, when Jesus looked at the crowd and saw them, he had compassion upon them, went up into a mountain, sat down, and taught his disciples the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus saw the crowd and built the man to impact the crowd. There's a whole message in that right there. But he did not, Jesus yelled so infrequently when he did, the scripture notes it, that he stood and cried out. Jesus did not shout that much. So it's not about your feelings. It's not being about scream that. So what's another possibility? I know what it is. I know what it is. This glove has no discipline. I mean, look at it. Now, there it went. You knew it was going to happen, didn't you? It has no discipline. I mean, look at it. It takes the form of anything you put it on. It's got no discipline. Excuse me. Okay, glove, get in the game. Let's go, book. 
Give you the book. Your discipline is irrelevant in what this is about. Doesn't matter if you're disciplined. Doesn't matter how guilty you feel. How many of you do anything out of guilt for Jesus? Don't raise your hand. I'm keeping mine down. I just need to do better for Jesus. I need to do better for this. It ain't about that. It ain't about your discipline. So the more disciplined you become, what happens? The more disciplined that you become, you become more pharisaical. Right? That's what the Pharisees, that was their problem. They were highly disciplined. They, they even bragged, we even tied the mint of our garden. Well, big deal. You know, there's some people that build up themselves and they posture themselves and they go, well, you know, I read, I read this and I do this and I do all this and I do this and they let everybody know about it. Well, who cares? You think that's what this is really about? About being more disciplined? What happens to those type of people. Well, they can't fall, can they? They can't be human, can they? Look at the Pharisees. They said, why are you leading with those sinners? We won't even get near them. We won't, we're so, you know, we, we don't want nothing to do with that. They were so disciplined. Okay, so it's not about discipline. I know. I know. I got it. Remember what I told you? This is really a work glove. I've actually used it to work. I know it's amazing that I do work, but I do work, and I did use this glove. It's dirty. That's the problem. What I'll do is I'll get me some, a basin of water, some detergent. I'll take it. I'll scrub it. I'll get it all nice and clean. I'll rinse it, get all the soap out and everything, and I'll hang it in the dry. And now that it's clean, surely by now, it'll pick up the book. <laughs> it just sits there. You will never be clean enough to live the life of Jesus Christ on your own. Do you understand that? It's not about you being dirty. Can you imagine going out of the house today? Some of you might have taken a shower before you came here today. Maybe. Maybe. Teenage boys, not so much, maybe. Can you imagine getting out of the house? You get out of the house and you go, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I got to go take a shower again. Wait. And then you come back out. Or you come in the door here and you're, you're doing this right here and somebody comes up to shake your hand. You're kind of like, you know, I don't want to get any, I don't want to get any debris on me. Got to stay clean. See, we think that we have something to do with being clean. If you have something to be, do with being clean, what's that called? That's called self-righteousness. And what does God think about that? He says he calls them dirty rags. And I could tell you what that really means, but I wouldn't be kind. Some of you already know what that means. So it's not about being clean. Does that mean you... You, you're trying to tell me that I can just go do whatever you want? Trust me. You get in the right frame of mind where, where Christ is and you'll get to do whatever you want. Trust me. So now, you get to speak. You ready? As much as we can at one time, what do I have to do to get this glove to pick up this book. Ready? Everybody wants. I kind of heard a general thing, put your hand in it. Is that right? All right now, no talking. You really going to want to talk now. Is my hand in that in that glove? Is my hand in that glove? Yeah, yeah. Still, can't pick up the book. I'm going to tell you something you ain't going to believe. 
as much of Jesus Christ that will ever be in you is in you right now. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ. The, as much of Jesus is in you is in you right now. You have all things in Christ. What's the problem? See, people say, well, I have Jesus in me. I just, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. What's the problem? Why do I keep failing? Why do I keep falling? Why can't I do, why can't I do like, like, like Pastor Matt does? See, you're going to be shocked. We're going to be shocked at the judgment seat of Christ, what this really is all about. See, a lot of people think they're going to stand before, the, uh, before God at the judgment seat of Christ and they're going, to, they're going to be judged on the works of their goods and bad deeds. Well, you know, I stole this, I told a lie here, I did this, I, I, you know, I lusted here, I did... That's been settled. That's done away with. You're never going to deal... God's never going to deal with you in that. You know what he's going to deal with you on? What did you do with the freedom I gave you? What did you do with the wealth I gave you? What did you do with all the assets I gave you? And I'm not talking about money. There's bigger things than money in this. So how does this, how does, how can we get this to happen? See, many believers will live most of their Christian life just like this. They have Jesus, but they have no ability. They have no way of fulfilling what this is about. See, instead of reading the Bible to get something out of it, you read it to let Jesus be formed in you. Instead of praying for things for yourself, you pray to let Christ pray through you. Instead of coming to church for yourself, you come to let Jesus be formed in you. Instead of fellowshipping or witnessing out of guilt, because, you know, you're a believer. And, you know, if you believe that people are really dying and going to hell, you tell them about it, right? You're awful. You're holding up the gospel. What about just letting Jesus speak through you? What about just talking to people because you love them? How do you love them? Because Jesus lives in you. What if you begin to think like he thinks? And pretty soon... Jesus Christ is formed in you. I heard an old pastor one time said he was working himself to death, just working himself to death. Everything he was doing is in the flesh. Everything he was doing is in the flesh. And one day he just couldn't take it no more. He just couldn't take it. He went into his bedroom and he just lay down on the bed and he said, God, I can't do it. God, I'm done. God, I'm done. I'm tired. I can't do it. And he was waiting for the father to say, there, there now, my son. Just get a good night's rest. And it'll be okay in the morning. But he heard his father say, whew, finally. He was like, excuse me? He said, you want me to quit? He said, no, I didn't expect anything out of you anyway. I was waiting for you to get out of the way. And, he and one day, not because you're striving for it, not because you're begging for it, one day you hear your father say, pick up the book. Now, I'm going to lay some heavy truth on you right now. Anything that hand can do that glove can do now. Anything that 
glove, that hand can do, that glove can do now. Christ lives in me. Jesus came and he invested his life in 12 ragtag outcast bums. And he turned the world upside down. He came to explain who who God was by example, deed, word, everything. Jesus said crazy stuff like this. I look at the Father, I watch him work, and I get in on what he's doing. I don't say anything of myself. I, all I say is what I hear him say. Now, let me ask you a question. Who's in control of this glove? Is the glove... No. Can you see what's in the glove? No. It's the evidence. Look over at Galatians 4:19. Paul's talking to the Galatians, he says, "My children, whom I again in with whom I'm, I am again in labor until Christ is formed in you." See, we don't need more pastors. We don't need more people up here speaking. We, know, we need more people who have Jesus fully formed in them so that when the Father says, go here, go there, pick up the book, move it here, move it there, guess what they're going to do? They're going to do it because they have Christ fully formed in them. Galatians 6, 1 says, you who are spiritual or you who are strong, nobody here will say, I'm strong. How many of you would say, I'm strong in the Lord? No, you wouldn't do it because you'd be afraid people would think you're proud. Well, guess what? If, that, if nobody admits it, who's going to do the job? Is Jesus formed in you? Does he have only a finger and a thumb? Does he have a thumb? Can you imagine how hard it would be? Look at how hard it is to pick it up without a thumb. You know, we've got everything except the most important part. Is Christ formed in you? That's the New Year resolution. Jesus, I don't want to pray anymore. I don't want to read my Bible anymore. I don't want to witness anymore. I don't want to go to church anymore. I don't want to do any of this anymore unless it's to let you be fully formed in me. And you understand that can't happen inside of you without the power of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this time that you've given us to be together. Lord, as we reflect on these truths, Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for coming to the cross, taking our sin debt, giving us the freedom to become the sons of God, the people of God. Lord, we know that you have given us such a task that we have to have this true in us. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this time. Speak to hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.